we are at the first meeting of the European Harm Reduction Network in Marseille, France, where harm reduction activists, professionals and policymakers gathered to discuss the challenges and problems ahead of the harm reduction movement in Europe. I know the impact of harm reduction in my country. Drug users have a job, have a home, um, are in treatment. Um, if they use, they do it in a safe environment of a, a consumption room. Last year, in 2010, in the entire country of the Netherlands, there was only one infected person um, with HIV reported, one new case of HIV among drug users in an entire country. 30 years ago, that was 30% of all infected drug users. Same rates about uh, overdoses, that has dramatically gone down. So if we want to talk about evidence about harm reduction, th that battle has been won. We don't need to talk about evidence. It has become European policy. Although harm reduction is, has become mainstream, uh, there are still huge challenges ahead. And that's one of the issues that we're going to discuss over the next days. We witness the emergence of new populistic policies and uh, uh, serious budget cuts in, I think, in all countries of Europe. This year we went to the European Parliament. There was a hearing uh, on public health issues and we asked uh, the, the members of European Parliament how, what can they do to support harm reduction in the European level. And one member of Parliament answered that, you know, now we are uh, struggling for keeping together the European Union, so we really don't have this issue in the agenda. One of the major problems is to keep this issue in, on the agenda. Harm reduction works. I mean, it works everywhere and it works also in France. We have basically reduced the prevalence of HIV among people who inject from 40% to 11% today. I mean, the result has been really immediate. Uh, in terms of uh, overdose related to heroin, the reduction has been by 80%. That is an absolute amazing success in terms of public health. And also in terms of criminality, the drug-related crime also has decreased by 80%. So all, the, the, all these are like the major successes of harm reduction in France. And I'm happy to say that, that still today, uh, the French harm reduction uh, system is still largely publicly supported for the long term. We are very happy about what we, what we got in the 90s. Right now we're basically trying to save the system. A lot of NGOs are facing very severe problems because of the budget cuts. We still do not have safe in consumption rooms, even though in some neighborhoods they will be really life-saving for many people. We still do not have uh, any needle exchange in French prison, even though we, we, we know from Switzerland, for instance, right next door, that it's really simple to implement. We have a French government that has some populist tendencies that actually like to blame some people for the problem of uh, the social problem that we're facing today and drug users are really an easy target. The simple use of, uh, uh, of drugs in France can be very uh, harshly punished. Use and detention of drugs in France can be punished from one to ten years in prison and like fines ranking up in the thousands or, or even millions if you look at the law and this law is actually applied. You have a, a tens of thousands of people who are facing you know, serious personal problem because they're just users and just stopping that oppression of drug users because it costs a lot of money, it costs a lot of police time for harassing poor people basically. Uh, just stopping that will actually save up a lot of very needed uh, governmental cash that could actually be used to develop social program. I think we do have achieved quite uh, a lot, um, although not sufficient, consisting of uh, um, needle exchange programs all over the country. In 200 cities there are uh, automats outside, publicly available 24 hours, 7 days. Um, we do have um, some 80,000 uh, drug users in substitution treatment. Um, there is heroin assisted treatment uh, available. We do have uh, some 25 uh, drug consumption rooms uh, in 18 cities in Germany. In 2010, only 3.2 percent of all the diagnosed HIV cases were uh, drug related. Um, and this is quite uh, the, the lowest figure we ever had uh, in the last 20 years. And this is, I think, the most striking success. Another success is that drug users get older and older, 
Germany is quite heterogeneous and very diverse uh, and there are huge treatment gaps uh, from north to south and from east to west. Most of the pe people in prisons will not have access to opiate substitution treatment. Only a tenth of those uh, in the community, there are only three to five percent of those who are in need of this treatment, will receive it. There's only one out of 220 prisons uh, who uh, uh, offer a needle exchange, a needle exchange program, an automat, um, and other services like, like naloxone on release uh, to uh, prevent overdosage uh, after release are non not existent. The most important policy action would be uh, a decriminalization, a drug policy reform, which is badly needed. Uh, it's at the moment it's completely untouched the whole area. Although we have got um, a quarter of a million drug-related uh, offenses year by year and uh, 100,000 of them only for the possession of small quantities for personal use of cannabis. Oslo has a very, very large amount of overdose deaths. One of actually the, the cities in Europe with most overdose deaths per capita. In Oslo, there is one consumption room and that's the only consumption room in Norway. It is a very important harm reduction measure, but the, the consumption room still has a very small capacity. It has opening hours um, that are quite rigid and they are not, it's not open for a very long time. We have a lot of harm reduction measures. Um, we have both uh, a lot of cafes where drug addicts can come and get food. We have a needle exchange. The substitution treatment has grown and before it used to be a very rigid system. There has been a softening up of the system, and this, which is very, very good. Spain had have a tradition of hair production about 15 years ago. Barcelona had uh, seven consumption rooms, uh, more or less maybe 15 uh, drop-in centers. We have uh, a lot of teams of outreach work in the, in the streets. Did these consumption rooms change the picture on the street, like there are less drug users using on the street and going more to uh, consumption rooms? Is it an effect like that? Yeah, of course. I think that this kind of resources are very, very effective. But nowadays we need to to work for, for the hepatitis. 70% of the drug, drug users, injected drug users, is in, in fact by the hepatitis C. We have a decreed law that uh, frameworks uh, the arm reduction intervention in Portugal. So that's a great achievement. With decriminalization, we start to look at the um, user not as a criminal person, but as a person with a DCE. Some people from the Portuguese state and from the Portuguese government, they could look at arm reduction, you know, as a philosophy that believes, accepts and try to work with the drug user not as a sick person, but as a citizen. The state has instrumentalized NGOs from civil society to do a great, a great hell of a job with, you know, a few amounts of money. For sure, between 3% and 5% of the Portuguese uh, budget, uh, budget uh, state to the drug field is only dedicated to arm reduction, between 3 and 5%, and I'm being generous with the numbers. Even though harm reduction is officially recognized, it is not directly supported by its state, with one exception, which is the Ministry of Justice, the National Prison Administration, which introduced funding for syringe exchange programs and opiate substitution treatment in uh, prisons. Most uh, harm reduction services are based in Bucharest. Even though we have uh, scaled up the needle exchange programs and substitution treatment uh, in Bucharest, the access is still low compared to the uh, full population of drug users, especially uh, opiate users. Well, I think the, the main success that we are still existing, that there is some harm reduction which is existing. And, uh, well, we can't even speak about the scaling up because in the last years there were closed uh, of the project. Some of the project has been closed. And because of the budget cuts and the situation we have, we just don't know what will be the next year. People are going to prison and serving in the prison for very small dosages. The, the IRA made a global state of harm reduction report a few years ago and it mentioned Hungary as a good example 
which has a very progressive harm reduction oriented drug strategy and uh, last year our new government just rejected this progressive drug strategy and now they are redrafting a new drug strategy based on zero tolerance approach. <coughs> In Poland there is uh, access to the opioid substitution treatment, but there is still very limited. There is a big region, a geographical region of Poland, where there is no any sub opioid substitution treatment. Uh, we have also needle exchange programs. There are in two of the biggest cities, Krakow and Warsaw. Last year, uh, we um, Parliament approved new law which opened the little window of opportunity because in cases where somebody possesses small amount of the drug, prosecutor can abandon the idea to start prosecution. So this is really small liberalization. 80 million uh, zlotys, so approximately uh, 40 million of dollars are spent for um, that very restrictive law. What have you achieved in terms of harm reduction in the past in Ireland? The HIV within IDUs is, is falling, hepatitis C within the IDUs is obviously rising and obviously services are being curtailed back. I would love to see drug consumption rooms in Ireland um, to actually roll out, have, have a national hepatitis C strategy, again that's not there at the moment, uh, national overdose prevention strategy as well. The UK is one of the birthplaces of harm reduction in Europe um, and the world, particularly with the, the initial projects in Liverpool that then spread across the rest of the United Kingdom. Um, and through the 80s and 90s we had very successful harm reduction programs and there was a very strong awareness that these programs should be driven by uh, public health and the need to prevent HIV and other bloodborne viruses. The way we have set up our drug services in the UK I think stifles innovation. It makes for a very bureaucratic response and this is not helpful when drug scenes are changing very very fast. What do you think about the smaller coalition partners idea to decriminalize or decriminalize drug use? I think it's very positive that we now have two political parties in the UK that are talking about drug law reform very openly, which is the Liberal Democrat Party, which is part of the government, but also the first Green MP from Brighton is now also talking about uh, no, the need for drug law reform very seriously. And my hope is that actually the financial crisis may, become, may actually be the thing that says this is not about ideology, this is not about morality, this is about funding. And, and prohibitionist models are very, very expensive and lead to growing costs as you do more damage to the health of people who use drugs. So I hope that we actually may persuade people that of all times it's in the middle of a crisis that you go for the best value for money model which is harm reduction.